The recording of this broadcast has begun uh, about 10 minutes into the session. Um, so to distinguish um, whether you're going to add the uh, exponents or if you're going to subtract them, you can think about um, the multiplication, um, increasing things, making things bigger, and addition also makes things bigger. So remember that when you're multiplying powers, you add their exponents. Now when you divide things up, um, you're making smaller portions. So you can relate that to the subtraction of their exponents. So when you're dividing powers, you subtract their exponents. So 5 minus 2 will make 3. Um, the other thing you need to remember is that you have to keep the same base when you're multiplying or dividing. And these have to be the same base. So say, for example, if you had um, x squared times y squared, well, you can't make that xy to the fourth or xy squared. The bases have to be the same in order for you to produce a solution um, like what we've done over here. Okay, so now let's look at when we add and subtract powers. Okay, now in order to add and subtract, these bases here have to be the same. And then we just simply add the, x, the coefficients in front. So 3 plus 5 is 8, and so it will be 8x squared. And then the same thing for the subtraction. The x to the fourth is the same. We subtract the coefficients. And so that will be 6x to the 4th. Okay? <clears throat> Alright, let's go on to the next problem. Now our next problem is um, related to geometry. And this one is concerning a circle. So I'll go ahead and freehand this circle here, and we'll pretend like it is a perfect circle. And it says, if a circle has a radius of 12 feet, now remember that a radius is a ray that extends out from the center of the circle to the edge of the circle. Now that can happen from um, the center here to the east direction. Anywhere, like the spokes on the wheel of a bicycle, those will all be considered to be your radii. So this one is 12 feet. And it says, what is the circumference near, uh, most nearly? Now, you have to remember this formula in order to do a problem like this. And the formula for circumference, and circumference is similar to a perimeter, um, but circumference is specific to circles. So we're looking just for the distance around the outer edge and not the area. The area would be how much space is contained here on the inside. So we're only looking for the outer edge of the circle. So circumference is 2 pi r, 2 times pi times r, or the other formula that you may be uh, familiar with is pi d. Okay. Now let's talk about the difference of these formulas. Um, this one is saying 2 times pi times your radius. And we're given a radius in this particular problem. They told us that the radius is 12 feet. So we could simply substitute the value in for that one. So our circumference will equal 2 times pi times our radius, which is 12. Now to determine if I'm going to use 22 over 7 or... 3.14 to represent my value for pi, I first come over and look at my answer choices. If I saw an answer choice in terms of pi, like this said 24 pi or something like that, then I know I don't have to do any converting of values with my symbol pi. Um, but since I see whole numbers here, I'm going to begin to do a little bit of uh, conversion here. So I could either convert this over to, since there's no decimals, I know I'm either estimating or I'm using 22 over 7 to represent my pi, value for pi. So here, just multiplying those, I have 24 times pi. Okay? 
and then you think about well, what is pi? It's um, 3.14, which is we can say 24 times 3 and get an estimate there. 24 times 3 would be 12, and this would be 6 plus 1 is 7, so that would make 72. But we know the value is more than 72. So we say, okay, we know that this is an option, and we know that this is not an option. But 72 and 75 are pretty close together. So you have to say, does that um, 3.14, does that 1.4 make enough of a difference for it to um, be rounded up to 25, or am I going to be rounding down to stay here at the 72? Um, so let's check it out by going ahead and doing that full multiplication. Um, if these numbers, if this said something like 90, then we would know for certain we could just go with the 72 and that would be our answer. But since we have two pretty close together, we want to go ahead and continue to work for it. Okay, so we have 3.14 times 24. So that would be 16, 4, 5, 12, 8, 2, and 6, 6, 13, 4, 5, and 7. So it's 75 and a little bit. So then we know from there our answer would be C. Now I asked the question before, how do we know the difference between uh, which formulas we're going to use for our particular problem? Well, two times your radius, which means you have a radius extending that way, a radius can extend this way, and together they make a diameter. So the diameter for this one will be 24. So we would still essentially be saying 24 pi once we got, if we, if they gave us a diameter. Or, um, if, you know, if they gave us a diameter to start with, we would use this one, or we can take the diameter and cut it in half and use this one. So my point is saying is that we can use either one of these equations just as long as we know what we're doing. Okay, so now we're going to go on to our next problem. Our next problem says Alice leaves her house driving east at 45 miles per hour. So I'm going to go ahead and draw this road that she's traveling. And I know that she's driving at 45 miles per hour. Okay? And then it says 30 minutes later, her husband Dave notices she forgot her cell phone and sets off after her. So remember, she's already 30 minutes in. 30 minutes have already passed before he even leaves the house. But they're traveling in the same direction. And it says, how fast must Dave travel in order to catch up with Alice three hours after she leaves? Okay, so th that means and we were trying to find out um, how long will it take him to meet her three hours after she leaves. So that will mean that he's on the road for how long? Three and a half hours. Okay. I'm sorry, three hours after she leaves. So that means she will, will have been on the road for 3.5 hours. And if she's driving at 45 miles each hour, that means here, this is at her one hour point, she has driven 45 miles. And then after two hours, she's driven an additional 45 miles. And then after this point, she will have driven 45 miles. And then she'll have that extra 30 minutes, which is half of the 45. So that will be half of 40 is 20. And half of 5 is 2.5, so that would be 22.5 additional miles. So 45 and 45 is 90, plus another 45 is 135. Um, 155, 156, 157.5. So she has driven 157.5 miles total. So now we're trying to figure out for him. How many miles per hour must he drive? This is what we're trying to find out. Well, he's got to drive a total of 
um, 157.5 miles. And he's going to do it three hours after she leaves. So we'll take that three and divide it into the 157.5. Three goes into 15 five times with nothing left over. Three goes into seven two times. Two times three is six. Six from seven is one, so there will be one left over. And then three um, goes into 15 five times. So he would have to drive 52.5 miles per hour. Okay? So just to recap on that problem. Um, she had already been on the road for 30 minutes. He's going to leave out 3 hours after she's left. So that means she will have driven a total of 3.5 miles. I mean 3.5 hours. And we know that she's driving 45 miles each hour that she's on the road. So we did it one two, three times, and then we took half of 45 to get that 30 minutes, which made a total of 157.5 miles. And then since he's going to take a three-hour trip, we divided that number by three, and we got his total miles of 52.5 miles per hour. Okay. <clears throat> Let's look at our next problem. So our next problem says, your car uses gasoline at the rate of 21 miles per gallon. It says, if gasoline costs $2.82 per gallon and you drive for 7 hours at a speed of 48 miles per hour, how much would you pay for gasoline for the trip? Okay, so uh, we know that you're driving 48 miles per hour and you're driving for seven hours. So we can calculate the number of miles that you're traveling. Now similar to the last problem, we drew the road and we kind of broke it up into the hours and the partial hour. Um, well, this one, we're just gonna do the math. So eight times seven is 56. Seven times four is 28 plus five is 33. So that's 336 miles that we're, we're traveling, okay? So it says, um, how much will you pay for the gasoline? Well, we know we get 21 miles per gallon. So we can take that 336 and divide it by 21. So 21 goes into 33 one time. Uh, with two, 13 left over. 12 left over. So that's 12, so that makes 126. So we're going to take 21 into 126, and that should go 6 times, because 6 times 1 is 6, 6 times 2 is 12. And so that means 16 is our answer, and that's the number of gallons that we will um, have driven, have used up. Now, that's not the end of the problem because it says how much will you pay for the gasoline? Well, we use 16 gallons and the gas costs $2.82. Now, when you take this test, it will be multiple choice. And once you start this, um, your multiplication process and you can see that last digit um, totaling what's on your answer choices, then you can go ahead without completing the rest of the problem choose um, your answer choice and keep moving on to your other problems. So here 2 times 6 is 12, 48 plus 1 is 49, and 12 and 4 is 16, placeholder 0. So the example of what I was talking about, once you get your, your digit here in the ones place, you check your answer choices, if, it's the only, if there's only one that has a 2 here, in that place, then you know that that is your answer, and then you don't need to complete the rest of the problem. But we'll go ahead and complete the rest. So we put a placeholder zero, and then we do one times two, which is two, one times eight, which is eight, and one times two, which is two. So that makes 11, 
9, 15, and 4. As far as where we move our decimal, we count how many places are after our decimal place. So there's 1, 2, so we come in here, 1, 2. And so the cost of our gas will be $45.12. Let's see if we have any other problems here. I don't know if we did this one. Did that one. Okay, so we have that one to do. The green one, which is on page 212, number 29, and we've completed that one, we've completed that one, we've completed that one, and we've completed that one. So our last one here is from page 212, number 29. Okay, it says the recruiter travels 1,100 miles during a 40-hour work week. If she spends two-fifths of her time traveling, how many hours does she spend traveling? Okay, so we're trying to find out how many hours did she spend traveling. Well, she worked for 40 hours, and it says that two-fifths of her time, so we just multiply this by two-fifths. Well, in multiplication, you can multiply, you can, some people like to do this, change that to a fraction over one. But when you multiply in fractions, and that's what these parentheses are representing, or you can put a uh, multiplication symbol between, you can multiply across the top, which 40 times 2 makes 80, and 1 times 5 makes 5, and then do division. But I like to do a little cross canceling here. So 5 goes into 5 one time, and 5 goes into 40 eight times. So 8 times 2 is 16, and 1 times 1 is 1, so that means then she spent 16 hours traveling. You say, well, we had some other numbers in here that we didn't do any math on. Well, that was just simply telling you that she traveled 1,100 miles during that time. But our question didn't have anything to do, that the question that we needed to find the answer for didn't have anything to do with the number of miles that she traveled, only her time, and so then this will be our answer for that question.